Well, continuing with our series, as promised, a man who would go on to become the father of the nation, Sir Lyndon Pinling, and a delegation of aid took the problems of the Bahamas to the world as they set out for the United Nations. It was all a part of the Progressive Liberal Party's struggle to improve the condition for the majority. John Davis Roll reports. <laughs> In the Bahamas, the 1960s were years of tumultuous changes. The majority of the people were growing restless with many inequities, and galvanized by the formation of the Progressive Liberal Party in the 1950s, were agitating for reforms in the political system. Many of these reforms, like votes for women, came to pass in the 1960s, but there was the issue that provoked great conflict and was one of the core issues that precipitated a landmark meeting in August of 1965 at the United Nations. It was the UBP's apparent gerrymandering of the new constituencies, as put forward in the report of the Boundaries Commission that provoked the opposition's anger. Charging that the UBP was eager to keep the old islands overrepresented and politically ignorant while it established new boundaries, particularly in New Providence, before any up to date census figures were available. The opposition PLP also noted that the government was not going out of its way to encourage voter registration. It was during the debate on the Boundaries Commission report that began in the House of Assembly on April 4, 1965 that Milo Butler defied the order of the Speaker Bobby Simonet, the son of the Premier Sir Roland Simonet, by refusing to limit his comments to 15 minutes. It took four very robust policemen to physically remove him from the chamber. He was followed in short order by the ejection of Arthur Hanna for the same breach of the rules of the House. The restless crowd of PLP supporters that was gathered outside the House was not appeased when the two men were immediately reinstated. Mr. Butler making the most of his return to the House of Assembly, speaking for 45 minutes. Aware of the spreading discontent on April 26, the Premier went on radio station ZNS, pleading with the people not to jeopardize their, according to him, prosperity, by being provoked into disorder by what he identified as irresponsible agitators, while promising or threatening that his government will not be intimidated. The PLP was determined to bring the attention of the world to the situation here in the Bahamas. In a letter to the President of the United Nations, Pinling wrote, The Bahamas are in dire need of help. The voice of the Bahamian people cries out to be heard. All former pleas have fallen on deaf ears, and only the great form of the UN remains. The leader of the PLP then went on to warn the continued refusal by powerful vested interests to establish a fair and equitable basis for free elections has reached a breaking point. A head-on collision is inevitable if something is not done soon. Permission was granted for a delegation of eight persons from the Bahamas to petition the UN Committee on Colonialism on August 23rd and 24th, 1965. The delegation of eight Bahamians who arrived in New York to address the United Nations Special Committee on Colonialism in August of 1965 was comprised of Lyndon Pinlake, Arthur Hanna, Milo Butler, Cecil Wallace Whitfield, Arthur Folks, Reverend H.W. Brown, Dr. Doris Johnson, and Clarence Bain. Mr. Pinling presented a comprehensive indictment of the social, political, and economic condition of the Bahamas under the UBP government. An Associated Press report of the day stated that the leader of the opposition party in the Bahamas charged today that Britain had helped a powerful ethnic minority perpetuate itself in office in those self-governing British islands. The AP report continues, he called for majority rule and acts that the UN Special Committee on Colonialism visit the islands and make recommendations. The report said that Pinling had told the committee that conditions in the Bahamas resembled a 20th century hell and that Britain had stood by and done absolutely nothing. After the two-day session at the United Nations, the committee did nothing formally about the petition from Pinling. The delegation did receive endorsements, some implied and some were actually from representatives of former colonies. However, because of the worldwide news reports of the event, the world at last knew about the problems of the Bahamas and that there was an entity like the PLP that was struggling to improve the conditions for the majority. Joan Davis Roll, 
ZNS Network News.